Mississippi State. Mississippi State off the tip. Jones hits the shot right away. Four seconds into the game, and the Bulldogs get the first bucket to go. Now, although Jones wasn't here, this ball club beat Kentucky in Rupp Arena for the first time ever for Mississippi State last year. And of course, they came off that SEC win against Kentucky to win the championship. Didn't play Kentucky here during the regular season. That game was played in Starkville. Right. So the last time they played on this floor, Mississippi State won. Allen misfiring on his first shot of the night. And you see Allen is able to shoot that ball over the top of Wilson. Straight man. Jones with a three. Kept alive, but tipped out to Shepard. Huskies like to play up-tempo. Shepard drives middle, corner to Johnson. King's open at the free throw line. He'll take it inside. There's nobody there to rebound. King gets it again for two. And then no blockout, Jim. King took that shot with nobody from Connecticut anywhere near the paint, but there was no blockout. Here we see a 2-2-1 trap. Leaves open. Wilson, three-pointer. Terrell Wilson, first team All-SEC on the coaches' poll this year. He's taken 207. That was 208 threes on the year. He's shooting over 40%. Knight over the top to Shepard. Misses it with the left hand. And Russell Walters pulls it down for the Bulldogs. That was a sign of things to come. Shepard going inside and posting up against the smaller guards. And here, Knight behind him, short. Followed up and in. Slammed home, Dante Jones. Dante Jones coming off two outstanding ball games in the NCAA tournament and, of course, was the MVP of the SEC tournament. At had 28 in that final against Kentucky. Tampere with the rebound. Mississippi State, the hot team at the start. 7-2, looking for more. Bullard, he's 0 for 9 now in the NCAA tournament from three. Ahead, Rudy Johnson. Thought about the baseliner. Doesn't challenge the big man. Outside with the steal. Bullard, he'll take middle. And a block foul called on Sheffer of Connecticut. I thought Knight might get this rebound. King was inside, too. But Jones slammed it home with the left hand, Billy. Boy, he brought that thing down with a left hand, as you say, Jim. A junior college All-American who has been a great addition to this ball club that lost three starters from last year. And remember at this time a year ago, we thought Mississippi State could be a real threat to go to the Final Four a year ago. Mississippi State made it to this round last year. Sweet 16 and then lost to the eventual national champion, UCLA Bruins, who then in turn knocked out Connecticut in the next round in the Elite Eight out west. Speaks of how strong that region was, huh? This one this year is pretty good, too. Yep. Straight man-to-man, -man. Connecticut changing her defenses. And here wildly from the blocks. Thought that ball hit under the bracket. Would have been Connecticut's anyway. Outside foul called against Mississippi State's Daryl Wilson. And the road to the semifinals included a, a rather rough go of it against Virginia Commonwealth, where Wilson led the way 15 points, and then ending uh, the dream run of Princeton after uh, Princeton's win against UCLA. That was really a business-like victory, too. I mean, they saw what Princeton had done in that opening game against UCLA, and these guys just came out, went to work, and as Pete Carell said, uh, not only in the studio, but after the game, they just too good a ball club. Damn Pierre with the block of Rudy Johnson's shot. Jim, he's playing kind of a one-man zone inside of the paint. And Travis Knight is going to have to keep him occupied. If he's not going to guard him, he's got to either go set some solid screens or get on the inside for some offensive rebounds. So far, he's not doing it. There's that pack way back inside. Knight playing the same kind of game. Wilson, another three. And again, he drops it home. And that's 10-2 Mississippi State. Well, Connecticut found themselves way behind against Eastern Michigan, Jim, so it's something that they have experienced in the NCAA tournament. And this is the man that usually gets them back in the game. Allen inside, and he and banks it home. Allen. Picking up again. Full court. It's a 2-2-1 zone trap. Let's see if they stay in it. Remember, Dante Jones has got himself open in the wings. There he goes. Jones from Bullard. Jim, that match 
matchup is going to be a problem for Connecticut's going to play that defense because Dante Jones was wide open on the wing. And by the time Ray Allen got there, Jones was in perfect position for the dunk. He can get up, Billy. Oh, I guarantee yeah, it. He really glides on that floor, does Dante Jones. Well, if this team can handle Kentucky, you know they're not in awe of a Connecticut. Ray Allen buries the jumper, two-point shot, 12-6, Mississippi State. Now here's the spread again. You got two experienced guards back there who can shoot. You've got Jones kind of wandering around. A violation turnover. We have a timeout on the floor. Officials timeout. Dante Jones slamming them home with six points early and a six-point lead. Well, UConn's road to the Sweet 16. First off, they foiled Colgate by nine in Eastern Michigan. Although that was quite a battle, they knocked them out by 14 as Sheffer matched a career high 27. UConn 32 and 2 on the year, only losses to Iowa and to Georgetown in the regular season. Nice hedge moves defensively by Dampier inside. Now it's short. But Dante Jones is everywhere, Jim, both ends of the floor. Really active. Yeah, he has three rebounds to go with the six points. He's averaging 14 points on the year, but has really come up big in the SEC tournament where I said he was the MVP and what he's done so far in the NCAA tournament. He's got Ray Allen on him. Quite a matchup. Wilson, three-point shot. That's Boy, he is on fire. Three for three indeed, nine points, and a nine-point lead for Mississippi State. Knight trying to back in. Wilson is the three-point leader in career for Mississippi State. But Sheffer matches it at the other end. Knight kicked it back out to him. 15-9 Bulldogs. They're really handling the 2-2-1 full court pressure nicely. As I said, they've got two experienced guards back here. Donnie Jones becomes the third man in the triangle. And here, too strong and Knight. And of course, that gives them pretty good defensive balance against the break. Back and forth they go, and off UConn. For those of you expecting the uh, Georgia-Syracuse game, we'll be getting you to that game and the tip on time. Coming up shortly out west in Denver. Rashmel Jones, a freshman in the lineup now for the Huskies. He's guarding Bullard here in this zone setup. Number three. Jim, you see how they're attacking. They're matching right up with that 2-2-1, keeping the two guards parallel to each other up the court, and they're walking it through to make a good pass. They very seldom try to dribble through the press. Walters follows it up and in. Shepard really influenced the first shot, but it was so short, Russell Walters picked up the loose change for two. He did not score against Princeton and had only two against DCU. So he equals his tournament high right now. Ray Allen can post up inside on Wilson. Also can shoot the three over him, as he does right there. Seven for Allen. Got a big, in fact, both the guards really have a, yeah, a considerable size advantage yeah, here tonight. I'd say a good two and a half, three inches. Too close. That foul called. If it's on Allen, it is on Allen. That's his first in the NCAA tournament after 84 minutes of playing time in this year's tournament. The first foul called on Ray Allen. Eric Hayward checks in for the first time. The guy who plays very actively on both ends of the floor, Jim. You'd think he'd pick up a foul or two on the offensive end of the floor, the way he penetrates. Back to man-to-man. -to -man. Wilson, can he go four for four? Yes, indeed. He just isn't hesitating at all with that. Terrific outside shooting by Darrell Wilson. He's now up to 87 threes on the year. Allen's shot rejected by Dampier. Allen from the corner, three. Long rebound, Jones touched it last. Big, ball. big push by Hayward on the inside, but Jones just held him off. I'll tell you, there's a lot of strength in Wilson, Jones, and Fuller. So although they're giving up some inches, they really are powerful upper body. Jim Calhoun's 10th year at UConn. And he's been 
on the brink of a Final Four a couple of times. Two Final Eights, but no Final Four. Henry this year, Shepard missing the lay-in. Knight had it stripped away, but into the arms of Allen. Boy, they've had a lot of chances on this trip, and it's an empty one. And there's that balance that Jim Calhoun talked about on this. Beautiful pass, great anticipation by Jones. Jones stepped right in that lane. Tough pass inside. Walters almost took it away. Three-second violation on the Huskies. Well, we often see that, Jim. One pass, too many. And the man in the lane doesn't anticipate it. Story here so far. Darrell Wilson with 12 points. On four. Six wins in the tournament will yield you a national championship, and these four are halfway there. UMass, Kentucky, Georgetown, Wake Forest, all with three wins, but needing three. Here it's 2012 Mississippi State with 11.55 to go in the first half. Watch this attack. You notice that one guard will stay behind the other, so there's always a passing lane. Attacking that 2-2-1 two -two full court press beautifully. Nice concept by Richard Williams. A little pick and roll action there, nothing available, Dampier goes down low. Doubled up, now skip pass, five on the shot clock, Bullard with Allen on him, not in time. Still as hot as Wilson and is. Almost shot, made that oh, shot. Shot put style, almost banked it in. There's Richard Williams in his 10th year coaching at Mississippi State. Hired 10 years ago this past Tuesday. First year, Jim, 7 and 21. Much like Jim Calhoun. They didn't inherit big program. Ahead, uncontested. Bullard will give it up. Almost double dribble. Jones. And a double-digit lead of 10, 22-12, the largest lead of the game. Mississippi State has never trailed. And watch what Dampier's doing. See, he's playing a one-man zone down inside. He'll let Hayward go out and drift. He wants to protect that paint. So there's not a lot of room. Good screen, Rudy Johnson screened the man to give Shepard the open three, but Shepard trying to follow his miss commits the foul. Jim, let's see this fumble right here by Bullard. He has it. He's waiting for Jones to come down. He's okay. You can recover a fumble. So that was an okay play. In the NFL and in the NCAA. <laughs> yeah. Two fouls, by the way, Billy, on Sheffer after committing that one. He really pulled the string on that last jump shot. Didn't follow through with it at all. Back screen that time by Wilson. Dampier finds Bullard open, but he snaps it over to Wilson. And a charge call. Charge call on Darrell Wilson, his second. You know, Jim, one of the guys that could be a key for this game, you mentioned Wake Forest is the last team talking about moving forward. They're moving, losing Tony Rutland really hurts. But when you start talking about this Connecticut team, Ricky Moore's absence in a game like tonight is really a serious problem for him. With that shoulder injury, the way it's going, it doesn't look like he'll be in there. But they can use a penetrating guard against this type of defense. Ricky Moore sitting all the way at the end of the bench. Went through the warm-ups, practiced about half the time yesterday, then left the floor. Kurt King has come back in for the Huskies, who have missed their last eight shots. Long range three, Ray Allen. Darrell Wilson serves as kind of like a peep sight for Ray Allen on those jump shots. Too small to cover him. Connecticut backing up now, no longer pressing this team. Those guys did such a good job against him. That was a three long range that Allen will have to get used to down the line. And inside on UConn, it's called on Travis Knight. Great offensive set by Mississippi State. I'm sure that Pete Carell smiled on that backdoor cut. And for UConn, checking back in, Rochelle Jones. Well, the rest of the night, Georgia and Syracuse. First one out in Denver tonight. Georgia Tech, Cincinnati to follow here. And then Arizona and Kansas. Well, Jim, with the great success that the SEC and the Big East has had, sooner or later, you had to get some clashes. So you got the Georgia-Syracuse tonight, and of course, you've got this one right here. Something had to give. gets them both. Wilson with 14 points in the first 10 and a half minutes. Johnson 
gave it back to the oh, team. Dante Jones. King follows, Knight tips it in. Seven rebounds for Travis Knight. You start talking about the way the pace is played. Mississippi State looks like they can keep their starters out there a long while. This has not become a run and shoot game. Wilson, please. One more time. He is now five for five from three point land. Not only that, Jim, he's getting that shot right up on his shoulder with that patented jumper of his with basically nobody guarding him. That's how called on Fuller, his first. And coming in now for UConn is Dion Carson, junior. Junior college transfer for Rudy Johnson. You talked about the pace of play, you know, all season long, Mississippi State, the most it's given up to any opponent. It's only 80 to Arkansas. Knight. Good second bounce by Dampier. Knight had him completely out of position, but the big guy came down and went back up quickly. Dampier on the, on the year, 101 blocks, and he's had two so far tonight. That puts him at 103. Ray Allen driving. <laughs> Getting himself a trip to the line for two. That foul called on Dampier, his first. Ray Allen, 23 points per game. First team All-America. Number two scorer in the Big East behind Allen Iverson, who is showing everybody around the country what a great performer he is. The Big East this year for the first time in history at three first team All America. Iverson Kittles, who's already home now. And Allen. This is a pair. Don't expect that. Nope. 27 17, Bulldogs, 8 30 to go in the half. They have totally negated the press. The place where Connecticut likes to start their offense is with their defense, and they're not getting it tonight. Dante Jones threw that right over. Dampier, and they said it touched the Huskies last. Now we've got Mississippi State subbing for the first time. Starters had gone all the way to this point. Whit Hughes, 6'5", sophomore from Jackson, Mississippi comes in. Jim, what's unusual in this ball game is Mississippi State on the year turns the ball over more than they have assists. Tonight they are being very efficient with the ball. Dante Jones, two. Back the way. Good defense by King. Ray Allen really trying to score, isn't he? Ooh, but that time, Jones was cutting to the baseline, and Allen well, threw it out of bounds. Jerome Sheffer comes back in. Remember, he has two fouls. Jones will sit. And they keep uh, Deion Carson on the floor. That He's getting the minutes now that would have belonged to Ricky Moore. Dante Jones posting up inside. Ten on the shot clock. Back and in, Kirk King goes up high, though. He can really get up on that jumper. Terrific ball reversal by Mississippi State. Jones had him posted the whole time. Carson, outsider. Rebound to use. This team is really well schooled at blocking out. And Dampier makes it all work by his presence in that one-man zone down in the middle. Dampier shot in and out. Jones battles for it though. No call. Nate Jones's feet were out of bounds. We have a timeout. Oh, that was the call. So it'll be Husky basketball. Wilson with 17 to pace the Bulldogs, who lead by 12. to have you with us. Jim Nance, Billy Packer from Lexington Southeast Regional. As you see the game summary, UConn only 28% and Wilson 17 points has matched the UConn total in the first 13 minutes. You talk about UConn as a team that averages 83 points a game, Jim. You can see how far off the mark they are tonight. Sheffer will have to give them some offense. 
Stolen away by Hughes. Back to Bullard. Finishing off board. Hughes hit the floor on his last pass. Yeah, he hurt his ankle, but that was a great pass he made. Lee Johnson, no go. Long rebound, Bullard. Hughes, bum ankle and all is ahead. This is the land, but Sam Peer follows it. You know, Hughes, actually, the injury helped Mississippi State there because Connecticut didn't realize he was still back down four. So they really played four against five. You'll see it here. All Hughes could do was to snap this one back to Bullard. You can see it right here because the ball was thrown over his head. He falls down and he stayed on the floor. Connecticut goes in the other direction with a five on four. And Hughes ended up all by himself with the old Gussie Hang play. And look at the man run the floor. Dampier lays it back in. So a timeout on the floor. And that timeout. Jim, you can see Hughes' ankle there. I don't know who called the timeout. It might have been a 20. 20. Yep. 20 second timeout for UConn. Hughes gets the attention. Now, Jim, it's serious time for Connecticut right here. This is the kind of ball game they haven't been able to turn it over defensively against this team. They've got to get some offense going, and it's got to come for somebody other than Ray Allen. He can't do it all. Trailed a large part of the first half against Eastern Michigan. Allen buries that shuffer, but uh, the 16-point deficit a moment ago, the largest for the Huskies and the NCAAs. Very subtle point, but you see how Mississippi State keeps one guard behind the other, so that that passing lane is always there against any pressure by about a step and a half. Jones fade away. <laughs> Knight tips it out. Jones. They call it on Jones. He did reach in. Near the conclusion of every NCAA tournament game, we will select the genuine Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. To date, Chevrolet has contributed almost five and a half million dollars to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. Jim Jones, quite a story. Played as a junior in high school, hurt his knee, dropped out as a senior, out of school for a number of years, then goes to junior college, makes Junior College All-American, and now here he is as a premier college player. And really just getting stronger by the week. Good solid screen. As I said, Connecticut's got to get scoring from somebody other than Ray Allen by halftime if they're going to make a move. Johnson tried to hit the three. Last touch, though, by King, and Jim Calhoun's team hasn't been down by this much since the regular season game, in fact, to Georgetown that they lost down in Landover. saying from the Mississippi State bench that Hughes with a slight sprain could possibly return. Johnson really getting out on Wilson now after the display he's put on from the outside. Dampier with the six-footer back to a 16-point lead. Shepard, not a good shot. Right back to him. Locked out of bounds by Dampier. UConn with 19 points, 12 of them coming from Allen, and only seven by the rest of the team. Jim, we saw it in the Villanova game. Isn't it interesting in the NCAA tournament where teams that are favored seem to start to panic a little bit too early? And I sense right now Connecticut is really getting nervous about their game. Well, there's a wild pass, and Dante Jones is the man to race into the front court. Couldn't finish it, though. Thought he was going to be guarded a little tougher than that. Yeah, that last UConn possession looked like a end of the game situation. Yeah, right down. There's a panic in their in their eyes and in their game right now. That too. Sure. Now they and they all start looking to the bench for help. So the foul called on Hayward is first. And let's talk about Mississippi State a little bit, Jim. They beat Auburn. Then they beat Georgia by 18 in the SEC semifinal. We're talking about a Georgia team that has really come on strong. Then they beat the team that everybody, including myself, thought was invincible. And they beat Kentucky by 11. I mean, it right. wasn't like a, you know, yeah, some it, kind of fluke shot. Exactly. And they held the Wildcats to only 33% shooting. In that game, they turned the ball over 21 times, but they had Kentucky six out of 24 from three. 4.15 to go in the half. 
16 point Bulldog lead. Got Hayward down there in Dampier and he wants the ball. Wilson, first miss. First time he was gliding to the side as opposed to straight in. Ray Allen realizing he's trying to do it all here. Knight from the outside. Travis Knight with four points. Knight doing a good job off the boards and playing kind of solid. Yeah, he has eight rebounds, Billy. 35-21, Mississippi State. And how about the way they have negated the Connecticut press, even on made baskets? Connecticut has had to back off. Really, but no factor. No. And they're not trapping in the half court either. Playing kind of passive defense for Connecticut. Wilson dumps it in. Dampier. Little ball to get away. He spun right around two Huskies. How about that? He left two in his wake. Knight and Hayward standing side by side said goodbye. Terrific drop step move. Bouncing it inside. Shepard to Hayward to travel. Kurt King going to check in. There's an official timeout. UConn shooting only 28%. Dampier, Duncan, Mississippi State on top. Mississippi State up 37 to 21 early over UConn. 305 left in the halftime. Pat O'Brien in New York along with George Raveling and Pete Carell. I want to show you what's going on out in Denver. Georgia trails Syracuse now. 22 to 13. Georgia playing in the red shorts and uh, George early in this game. But what do you see? Well, two things. Number one, the tempo favors Georgia, but the score doesn't. Number two, Syracuse is getting a lot of baskets in transition. What Georgia's got to do, Pat, is get Syracuse out of that 3-2 zone. There's 5,287 reasons why they're gasping for air up there in a mile-high city. Pete, uh, what do you like here? I, I agree with George. That, that zone defense there starts out like a 2-3, then comes into a 3-2. It's a little bit of a combination, and it appears as though Georgia's having some trouble with it. Up-tempo game, and they are gasping for air, as we saw there. You'll see this game at halftime. Let's send you back out to Billy Packer and Jim Nance. Thanks, Pat. Here, Marcus Bullard missed a jumper for Mississippi State. So, 37-21, the score as it was, going to the timeout. 2-12 to go in the first half. Heishan Sheffer, they're trying to post him up down low. And that's Bart Heish, number 22, seeing his first action for the Bulldogs. Floater by Allen. That's a great shot because he knew Dampier was waiting on him on the inside. Allen with 14 of UConn's 23. And Jim Calhoun trying to get his team aggressive on defense. They're just not doing this in this ballgame. Dante Jones. Kurt second King time. chases it down. And Jim, second time he's come down on the jump shot on one leg, fading away as opposed to going straight up and down. Freshman with the left hand, misfiring Jones to the outside. Heisch pulled up three. Jones beating everybody to the ball. All oh, UConn underneath Ill King the rebound. Ill advised shot there. You're up 14, nobody under the boards. Should have brought it back out. He's shaking his head, he realized it. See, Sheffer's trying to back down inside on Heish. Good and a foul move. called on Heish. That is the sixth team foul on Mississippi State. So one away from the one and one. Coming up, Penn's all at the half. You heard Pat, Pat, George Raveling. Plus Pete Carrill will get you updated on all the tournament news. Plus a live look at the Syracuse-Georgia game. That's coming up, Penn's all at the half. Jim Richard Williams took Dante Jones out. Nice move on his part. He's got the two fouls on. There's 110 to go, but he also wants to talk to him as he is right now about that shot selection. He's really done a nice job with his ball club. First three years with his ball club, losing records. Then in 90, he gets to the NIT. In 95, of course, he takes his ball club right to the NCAA tournament. And to replace the shooter, Sheffer, who has five points but does not have an assist in the first half. Travis Knight also came in. And as you can see, they replaced Jones with Whit Hughes, who had that uh, ankle sprain earlier in this half. He's fine. There's the 2-2-1 two, two, press again. Without Jones in there, it won't be quite as effective offensively. I didn't think so. They can turn him over. Same target in that triangle as is Dante Jones. 12 on the shot clock. Tough 
tough matchup here. Johnson on Hysham. Five on the shot clock. Bullard cutting through. And a whistle and a hold call against UConn's Jones. Boy, that was a big foul, Jim. Down to three seconds on the clock. Mississippi State in no position to get off a decent shot. Of course, here they got a situation three seconds. New 35 on because yep. of the foul. Yep. Yep. And only a, like yep. a two second differential on the shot clock, game clock. So the new 35, that was only the sixth team foul on the Huskies. <laughs> 20, 20, called by the Bulldogs. Richard Williams wanting to come back with his two starters that were sitting on that bench for the last possession. You talked about Richard Williams a moment ago. He is a graduate of Mississippi State. Coaching at his alma mater, but interestingly, he never played basketball at Mississippi State. He was a lifetime math teacher where he got involved in coaching and initially was a high school baseball coach, worked his way up to an assistant level at Mississippi State. Then again, 10 years ago this week, he took over as head coach. He's taken him to the NCAA tournament for the third time in the 90s. Well, how about Rick Majerus? How about Roy Williams? Well, it doesn't mean that you've got to be a player to, in order to be a great coach. They were students of the game. In Richard's case, he was a student under Babe McCarthy for many years. He observed Babe yep. McCarthy's teams. Yep. Sit in the stands and watch Mississippi State back in the mid-60s. Now, just that two-second differential. One-four situation here. Is it, are they going to bring Jones out for a jumper? That's offensive. It was a last-second push there by Bullard. Uh, I didn't think that was a good move on his part. He's got Wilson on one wing, Dante Jones on the other. I thought he'd take it down to about eight seconds and let one of them roll off him for their jump shot. Particularly the way Wilson shot in his first half. So UConn can operate now with the last, oh, nine seconds, let's call it, of the half. Dampier out on another great hedge move on his part. Jones, not the time. Mississippi State with only five first-half turnovers, but they made only one field goal, Billy, the last six minutes. That's the end of the first half. The score, Mississippi State 37, Connecticut 25. And CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Saturn. Radio Shack. UPS. And by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Well, Mississippi State led by as many as 16. At last uh, point, 37-21. Huskies scored the last four, but Billy, let's go through the coach's edge here. All right, keep your eye on Darrell Wilson as he's going to step in and step on to the outside. Dampier does an excellent job not only handling the ball, but setting some screens here. Now watch, Dampier will hit. Wilson steps in, picks up the solid screen here, a double solid. Wilson shoots right over the top. In the first half, he's five for six from three, and here's how he got one of them. Great double screen, Dampier sets it solid, no way for Johnson to get there. Wilson buries it. Wilson has 17, Dante Jones with 10. Ray Allen leads UConn with 14, but Billy, the rest of his team from the field, it's uh, pathetic. Four, four for 23, and Jim, as I sensed the little panic setting in in that first half, I said points are half, will have to come for Connecticut from somebody other than Ray Allen, and it didn't happen. All right, UConn ball to start the second half. Down 12. But Jim, Mississippi State did not handle the last two minutes of the half very well. It cost them about eight points. So instead of being up by 18, they find themselves now in a 10-point game. UConn trailed twice this season at halftime by double digits. 15 to Iowa. They came back and took that game to overtime with Iowa winning. And then 12 to Georgetown. And they ended up losing that game. Now the Huskies on a little roll here. Zephyr has to hit it. Big shot. Would have cut it to seven. He has really short-armed all his jump shots tonight. He hasn't followed through at all. Knight 
looks open on the inside. Didn't take advantage of it. Yeah, he just flipped it right back out. And he, he had a little room there. He sure did. He had Walters on him and not damn fear. He had a chance to get off a shot. Illegal screen. So, the Huskies down by 16 at one point. Had a chance to reduce it to seven. Right out of the box here in the second half. Travis Knight uh, had an opportunity too. But that was called on Rudy Johnson, his first. Well, the most that uh, Connecticut has been down prior to this game in the tournament was 13. They were down 32-19 to Eastern Michigan. Rallied, of course, even by halftime in that one. Another solid screen, same play, coaches edge. Wilson, they ran it again. Wilson with 20 and six three-pointers. Too bad Jim Calhoun didn't have the coach's edge in at halftime. He'd have been in great shape, huh? It was exactly the same play. Nice good and go. Charge. Charge called on Rudy Johnson. Here we see the play. Wilson down inside, Cutter goes through, Dampier hits, the double screen is set, here comes Wilson, Johnson can't get there in time. No, that is not the same play we showed before, it's a new one. Great execution. You see, Jim, how they have totally negated the press. I think they're respecting the guards a little bit too much. Jones fade away, Shepard. He's one to get good. things going in a hurry here. Good statement, Jim. No, you said fade away, and that's what he is doing when he misses. He's fading away too much instead of coming down square. Not even Garden Johnson is Jones. Sheffer only one of seven from the field. Knight, he's hit one from here, and soft touch for two. That, that can really help because it brings Dampier out, makes him play solid, take him out of that one-man zone in the paint. Nice bait. Dampier blocked by Knight. Back to him, though. He yes, banks it in. 42-29. Allen. So they've increased that halftime lead. Three minutes into the second half. Jim, the thing I love about Dampier is the same as Tim Duncan. They really know how to pace themselves in a ball game in terms of getting up and down the floor. Remember in that first half when Dampier realized, and he's an all-SEC academic guy as well, but he realized that he had a chance to get in on the break and followed up on the fast break. He really knows how to conserve himself out there. Hayward comes in for King in the Husky lineup. Wilson for his second, and Knight with the position underneath the now double-digit rebounds for Knight with 10. Sheffer should look for his shot and look to follow through a little bit more on the jump shot. Well, you got Sheffer 1 for 7, Billy. Rudy Johnson 0 for 4. Sheffer was 1 for 11 against Georgetown in the Big East Final and was saved in that game by Ricky Moore, but Ricky Moore is not available tonight, so a big loss for Connecticut. Ray Allen deep in the corner. Jones with the rebound. Yeah, UConn was down 11 with four and a half to go in that game at Madison Square Garden. Scored the last 12 points. Nobody out, Walters. <laughs> Hayward, they'll call it actually on Knight. They looked around, they had the choice of two. And that's called on Knight, just his first. Back half of tonight's doubleheader on CBS. One half hour after this game concludes, Georgia Tech and Cincinnati. What an interesting matchup that is. Coming right here from Lexington. And Arizona, Kansas, out west. Walters at the line to shoot two. Started out his career at the University of Alabama playing for Wimp Sanderson. Well, Jim, they say the young man's going to cut a record, huh? He already has. Yeah. He's working on a second one with his brother and his cousin, brother Reed, and his cousin Shara Lee is a country star. <laughs> well, you know, he ought to get together with Cliff Ellis, the coach at Auburn. He's a, he's a pop star singer, country and western man. He likes that Myrtle Beach music. You have a Ken and Auburn and a Mississippi State oh, band mix. Yeah, hey, it would have to work in the SEC, the combo, right? 
Sheffer. Boy, there's respect for Dan Beer's shot block ability. There it is again. King travels. Now, trying, to, trying to free himself, trying to get Dampier to commit. That's the case where Dampier does not get a shot blocked on either one of those attempts, but really probably should because he altered Sheffers, and, and then, it, of course, he created the walk on the other one. There was that backdoor play handled by Johnson pretty well. Next whistle will be a timeout. And it's a travel. Good defense by Ray Allen. So, uh, the halftime lead of 12 has increased to 14. Hey, tomorrow on CBS, look at this lineup. 12.30 Eastern Time, the Men's Division II Championship. Northern Kentucky against Fort Hayes State. Northern Kentucky from Highland Heights. That game will be played in Louisville. And then followed by the road to the Final Four, then two regional finals, Wake Forest, Kentucky, Georgetown and UMass will have our first two entries into the Final Four mix tomorrow. Sheffer again trying to post up, but they haven't been able to get him the ball inside. Kurt King, who has had some incredible shooting performances this season, hits his second shot in six tries. He at one time during the season made 22 straight field goals to Kurt King. Number three now all-time in field goal shooting percentage for Connecticut. But not getting many opportunities tonight, Jim. No double-team action down inside. Dampier loves it. Set out Wilson. Allen looking at him closely. Four on the shot clock. Wilson over Allen. And Travis Knight with position. Smart play by Ray Allen that time. He did not fall for the trap of going in on Dampier because he knows how well Wilson shoots from outside. Stayed right with his man. And you know he was tempted to go in and double-team. Bullard really moves those speed, doesn't he, Jim? Look at that tough shot off balance and last touch by Kirk King of UConn. Boy, for young players, want to see how you're supposed to guard a superstar. Don't reach in with your hands, move your feet. That's what Bullard's doing on Ray Allen. Allen can shoot over him without the dribble, but when he moves, Bullard's right there with him. Look at this, 30% from the field. Their season low in any one game was 35% for the Huskies. That was in an early season game against Boston College. They won by one. Dan Beer for two more. A nice clear out that time. And the way this team, you know, Jim Calhoun was right. This team has great balance. You've got the inside presence. You've got the outside guard play. You've got Jones that can step out. You've got an overrule on this call. We'll give yep. UConn the ball again. Dan Beer, that's his dunk. Checking tonight was number 45, Eric Hayward. That gives Dampier 10 points. Hayward checks in for Knight. So for a moment there, it looked like Mississippi State ball, but like, overrule, give it back to the Huskies. Boy, Bullard is so strong. He just held Ray Allen off right through the trap. This is the UConn team, Billy, you've talked about it. You're so accustomed to seeing them create opportunities for their offense, and tonight really virtually nothing at all. Yeah, the guard play of Mississippi State took away the pressure completely right off the bat. Ray Johnson got Jones to commit and a reach-in. Reach-in called on Jones, his second. If, if you'll watch Bullard's eyes when he guards Ray Allen, he kind of focuses in on number 34 right on his chest. He never takes his eyes off of that. So what Ray Allen should realize that he's doing is to shoot the jump shot without the dribble. His catch and shoot. They said that was in the act of shooting, so... We've had, in this game, a total of six free throws attempted until now. Some... 26 and a half minutes into this game. And one thing kind of interesting, the Cincinnati Bearcats came out during that last time out to watch the festivities. Well, you don't see that often, Jim, where a team ever comes to watch another opponent play in the NCAA tournament. And I can assure you one thing. I'll make an absolute statement. There will be more than six fouls committed yeah. in the next game. And that foul, in fact, called on Dante Jones was the first foul... Oh, on 
Mississippi State in this half. Now that goes to show you what I pointed out about moving your feet instead of reaching with your hands. Let's see if they can do anything on the press this time. Rushmel Jones has come in for the Huskies who trail by 12. See, what's happening? They stay back. Always the guard stays behind the other guard. Makes the passing lane perfect. Nice hands by Dampier. Wilson wide open. Oh, so perfect. That's 23, including seven from long range. Jim, I said Dampier looked like Keith Lee. He doesn't have the stats that Lee had up offensively, but he's a better player. Jerome Sheffer has just hit his second field goal of the game to bring UConn within 13. Huskies press tonight totally ineffective. They've been down by as many as 16 in this game. It was a 12-point halftime lead for the Bulldogs. Huskies trimmed it to 10 at one time, had possession but missed, and, and now it's back to 13. And how about that smart play? Dampier realized that they were not guarding the man taking the ball out of bounds, so he came down to be the outlet against the press. Nice move. So Mississippi State now in the maroon uniforms. Oh, he has good hands, doesn't he? Then he turns and looks and sees the whole floor. Shepard pushed oh, from behind by Jones. His third. He's in the wrong place at the wrong time on that one. And although he's going to probably have to sit down. For those folks just joining us watching the Syracuse-Georgia game, the story here, Daryl Wilson of Mississippi State has hit seven three-pointers. And he has 23 points on the night. Mississippi State leads 48-35 over the one seed in the southeast. Allen. Rebound to Hayward, who could have just turned around and given it an attempt. Looking for help now. Sheffer. Short again. You see how he's short arming that jump shot, Jim? It's very No tentative. extension, yep. Wilson ahead for two. 50-35 with 11.55 remaining. And a big mistake by Sheffer, realizing his shot's not going. He's being distracted by himself and doesn't have good defensive balance on that play. He should have been the man back. Knight. Travis Knight's having a good game here. That's eight points. And how about the respect that Connecticut's showing for the backcourt of Mississippi State? They're not even pressing them. Mississippi State has turned it over only seven times against a UConn team that usually forces a pretty high number. There was that nice inside-outside play. Jones going into Dampier. On that foul called on Eric Hayward. What a pass to Wilson. Still Mississippi State in control. UNLV didn't qualify. Duke, Carolina, Arkansas, and UCLA have been eliminated. So all of the champions of the 90s, not of the tournament. Kentucky in a regional final for the fourth time in five years. Jim, I'll throw one out that's kind of crazy, and I didn't realize this, but for the first time in SEC history, they've had a team in the final four for three years. You would have thought in all the time that Kentucky was so powerful, it would have been more, more times that that had happened. And they could do four this year, the way their teams are moving. Of course, they had Kentucky in 93, Florida and Arkansas in 94, and Arkansas last year again. So, the first time that's ever happened in SEC history. Big East, meanwhile, looking for a first spot in the Final Four since 89. Wilson off balance that time, but Walters brings it back out. Terrific rebound and a reset on the clock. Now, with Dante Jones out, they really lose a very important part of that balance we talked about, because they don't have the wing shooter. Walter's not going to take it. Jones out. He has three fouls. He's not scored in the second half. After a big burst at the start where he had ten. See, they don't. They really miss that wing shooter. Shot clock down to two. And King secures it. How about that? A smart play by Dampier. Not to go over the back of King. Don't pick up a cheap foul. Your team's in the lead. You don't want to give up any points. Nor get into that uh, foul situation where you got him on the line. 
Right now, both teams in pretty good shape in that regard. Mississippi State with just two team fouls. Allen lost control of it. Allen Fuller race with Allen chasing. Oh, oh, that was goaltended. No call. That, Jim, that was absolutely goaltended. The ball had hit the backboard, had to be on the way down because it was over the rim. Well, Allen kind of gave up the chase because he was wanting to set up for the block, and boy, did he block it. And the officials called it clean, 50-37 Mississippi State. 9.30 remaining, and Allen with the push. Well, the officials missed that call, Jim. You can block a ball when it hits the rim, or hits the backboard, but this one hits, and now it's down. As soon as it hit, it's on his way down because he was on above the rim when he lays it up there. Boom. Ray Allen takes it right of there. In addition to that, that ball was in the cylinder. So for two reasons, the officials missed that call. Allen picks up his second foul. Team's being very patient here, Jim, and I think at the nine-minute mark, Connecticut's going to have to think of another way to play defense against this club. Maybe a half-court trap. They've got to get much more aggressive. They appear. Lots of high in the air for two more. What they're doing defensively is not working. Knight, that was a prayer from inside. Just kind of wildly throwing it in the area. Campier has beaten Knight down the floor. He's in position to rebound. Shepard, rebound, and will try the right side. Jones wants it. Got an open three. The freshman knocks it down. This is the pace that I think Connecticut is going to have to play if they're going to get back in the game. Those were the first points of the game from off the bench for either team. 52-40 Bulldogs. 8.20 to go. How long does Richard Williams keep Dante Jones on the bench? He's got three fouls, right? That's it. That's three. Walters, Jumper. Back to the rim, long rebound, Knight. I'd say it's time for Dante Jones. They have to get that other score in the ballgame. King in the lane, rattled out, but inside Jones. King kicked it once. Off Walters. There's a sub coming in for Mississippi State, but it's not Jones. It's Bart Heisch. Hayward checks in for Connecticut. Husky ball when we come back. Well, Georgia Tech says if Cincinnati can do it, we can too. They come out to watch the action. Husky shooting 31%. Mississippi State with the threes all from Wilson. And Ray Allen, one of five in the second half. UConn unable to penetrate that 12-point halftime lead. Jim, they're going to have to change this game around with a different defensive strategy. A five-second call on Sheffer. Nobody coming to meet the ball. Now let's see if they do try to pick up a lot tougher defensively. They just fall back. Really surprising. They have brought in Dante Jones during the timeout. He checked in. And they put Wilson on the floor. So what you see... What you see Rich, Richard Williams trying to do right now is to be able to have his guys rested and out of foul trouble going down the stretch. Ten on the shot clock. Again, Wilson on the bench. Well, they're getting it into Dampier anytime they want to. Five on the shot clock. Shepard crashes the boards. On the wing, Jones. Boy, I tell you, Hayward had position, but Dante Jones got a hand on it to tip it to the outside. Jimmy's got some long arms and excellent timing. Plays much bigger than he's listed at 6'7", but he plays about 6'9". Two Huskies, it looked like they would control that offensive rebound. 6'50 remaining. Jones now wants to take it. And he's too quick for Knight. By Jones. Young man averaged 27 a game in junior college. You can tell that he can light it up. His first points in the second half. Yep, Jones comes in. What, not even a minute into the game after that break, and that's his fourth. He got stuck down inside on night on a bad mismatch. And, and just think about it here. You've got Dampier, who can, who's better off guarding night, and you got Haywood, who's not going to take the shots. How, 
Jones got met on the bat, and he's still in a wrong matchup. Allen got three for the three. Brings it down to 11, 54-43. Bart Peich, freshman, bringing the ball into the front court for Mississippi State. Here's that bad matchup for Connecticut now. Jones can take that. That Jordan shot. the shot. Bad shot. UConn can get it. Under 10. Three-pointer Allen. Knight crashes the boards for two. It's down to nine. First time they've been inside 10 since nine and a half minutes were remaining in the first half. 22nd timeout by Mississippi State. Wise call. Knight having a big game, Jim. Terrific job. Foul up one time. Gets it back with two hands. He goes up again. Somebody other than Ray Allen step forward if you're a Connecticut fan. It looks like it may be Knight. Sheffer has not been the man. Moore is not available. Knight with 10 points and 13 rebounds. Jim, we talked about the SEC. How about when you start thinking about what Connecticut has done? They've got the best winning percentage of any team in college basketball the last three years. Doing a tremendous job. They lead Division One with 89 wins, 12 losses, 49 and five in the Big East. It's incredible, you know what? Yep, on top of the Big East for 54 straight weeks, but no Final Four during that stretch. And 32 and two this year. A lot of folks expecting a slot in the Meadowlands for this team. They'll have to mount a big time second half comeback. 5.45 remaining. They're extending their defense a little bit more now. Though. That means Dampier may be open down inside. Knight's got his hands full. Dampier too strong, tipped up. And Knight fouls Dampier. Now, I'm sure that was part of the game plan from Jim Calhoun. If you're going to go ahead and extend your that defense out high with these clever guards, that means there's a lot of space inside for Dampier to operate on your postman. So he has made the move now to get a little bit more aggressive out on the perimeter. So Dampier is going to have that ball. Eric Dampier, 6'11", junior. And he is a 61% free throw shooter. Look at this. Bulldogs have only attempted four on the night to this point. They average 21 free throw attempts a game. And Jim, as a team, they're shooting 71.4%. You like to see that in a ball club. And he takes his time with it at the line. Connecticut no slouch either from that foul line as a team here, 73% free throw shooting team. Hughes will come back in for the Bulldogs for Heish. Gives him a little better matchup size-wise. Heish really doesn't have anybody to guard on this uh, Connecticut team. 55-45. Huskies who came back from 11 down with four and a half remaining in the Big East final against Georgetown. Bullard fighting his way through screens. He's doing is looking at that number 34 right in the chest. Look at those eyes. Yep. See that? They're just just set right in the middle. Yep. If, of those numbers. If they could burn a hole, it'd go right through his shirt. Foul called on Wilson on the outside, and for Mississippi State, that's only the fifth team foul. That's number three on Wilson. Actually, it's number four on the Bulldogs. Watch Bullard fight through these screens. He's so strong. In his, in his shoulders and his chest, that even when they try to set a screen, he's able to hold off a guy like King. And the referee's doing a wise thing here, telling the guys, got to live space through there. UConn cannot expect to mount this comeback just on the shoulders of Ray Allen. They need someone like now, Shepard to step up. See, there. Allen's hanging on to King's shirt so that there's no room for Bullard to get through. Do you agree with that, Billy? Someone else? Yeah, sure. I, I thought that in the first half. Shepard, two out of 11. Knight inside King for two. Everybody's starting to step up a little bit now for Connecticut, Jim. This is the run they've got to make. But I thought they had to get something off their defense. 55-47, 445 remaining. Good, solid game by Mississippi State. They don't look like they're ready to crack anytime soon. That foul on Dante Jones hurt him, though, didn't it? He came in and only was in for about 30 seconds and picked up his fourth. 
it really hurts them not to have his scoring ability out there. Five on the shot clock. Dan Pierre misses the short one. Last touch. Well, they saved by Mississippi State. I thought at first maybe it was off the hands of Allen. I thought it hit Walters right on the... Uh, and he's elbow. not arguing, so... Yeah. Remaining. 10-3 run for UConn. Ins player. And although he has not been shooting well in this ball game, you got to figure if they're going to leave him open like they are, he can take one. Allen, that was a two. His foot was on the line and rattles out. He won't miss many of those. Four-minute mark. Mississippi State has made only two of its last ten from the field. Ray Allen shoots 47% from three. When you give him a wide open one, he doesn't miss many. That was just a two, but still the drop turned over by Mississippi State. Walters led his okay, teammate too much. So we have an official timeout on the floor. UConn ball, Mississippi State, 55-47. Jim, sometimes it's not what you say, it's sometimes the way you act as a coach. Just a nice piece of coaching here. Ray Allen missed the jumper from the corner. Jim Calhoun came out and met him right at the top of the key and said, that's a good shot, keep doing it. You kind of like to see that. There's no time to panic here. UConn has all of its timeouts remaining, including a 20. Away from the ball, call against Mississippi State. That's against Bullard, who was holding Allen on the baseline. Kind of calling it tight right now down the wire. Went without the, kind of a foul free half. And now everything that uh, we see is being called. That is number five on the Bulldogs. 3.38 remaining. Mississippi State has never trailed in this game. Number five seed in the southeast. Allen to get it to five. Yes. What did I say, Jim Calhoun said? That was a good shot. Keep shooting. Just that little positive move by a coach can really help. 55-50. Dante Jones still on the bench, Jim. They can't wait another possession to get him back in there. We move inside three minutes. Just not. There's two guys on the floor don't want to take a shot. Bullard not a big scorer, so you're really down to two men that are going to take one. Four on the shot clock. Bullard, Shepard got a piece of it. Last touch by UConn. Off the hands of Knight. One second. That ball, of course, did not hit the rim. All there's time for, maybe a back screen Dampier on a lob. Here's the back screen. Here's Dampier. There's the lob. Ahead to Allen. He'll take Hughes to the baseline. Outside, they say a foul first. That is the sixth team foul. So one more, and you kind of go to the line for a one-on-one. -on -one. Here comes Jones, 238 remaining, Billy. He comes in with the four fouls. And Richard Williams could not wait any longer. And as I said, that cheap foul, which was his fourth, really cost Mississippi State a lot. Because it had him on the floor as the third score. UConn. Who's going to inbound it? All right, Sheffer giving some signals. Bullard's got his hands full now, fighting through these screens, trying to stay on Ray Allen. Sheffer not looking for his jump shot at all, Jim, as he pulled it up short all night. They're looking to get Allen off the screen. Here he comes. Into the paint. Suspended for a moment. Rebound fought for Rudy Johnson. What an effort to keep him alive. Ray Allen saying he got hit on the arm. He double pumped that one. Timeout called by the Huskies. 2.13 remaining in the game. We'll be right back. No matter what, let's talk about close games for these teams this year as you reassess the game situation with the timeouts. UConn's been in only two games decided by five points or less. Mississippi State 11 on the season. They went eight and three in games five points or less. Ray Allen, nifty trick. Tough shot, good solid screens by Connecticut. Clock becomes a major opponent now. Connecticut's gonna have to come out and pick up much higher. Look for Dampier and Jones, play a little two-man game inside. 
Mississippi State with one field goal since the nine-minute mark. And Ray Allen staying all over Wilson. Doesn't want to see a three come up right now. Now there's a switch. Well, there's seven on the shot clock. Rudy Johnson manning up on Wilson. He drives in. It's Wilson having some kind of night. Jim, there was a switch that time, and Ray Allen had to get off Wilson. A big mistake for Connecticut. Allen posting up. Staying away. Trying to do too much right now. Shepard didn't want a jump shot. Steps in. Followed up by King for two. 110 remaining in a timeout. 109 make it. And we have a timeout. Connecticut. He just wants a 20. See, there was a switch made there, Jim, and Allen had been doing such a good job on Wilson. He got caught on the switch. That put Johnson on Wilson, who's too quick for him. He went right by him as the clock was winding down. Sometimes those things happen. He had everything planned, and it just got away from him. Foul shooting contest the rest of the way, Jim. 109 to go. So the next foul will send both teams to the line for a one and one We had one number one seed eliminated already from this tournament. That was last weekend, Purdue. Here's the full court pressure. Now, Shepard's way, way back here. I, he's not guarding anybody. He needs to be up tighter. They thought about going long and had to call a timeout. See, that's why Shepard, when he pulled up tighter, took away the pass. Timeout, Bulldogs. They call him a 20. They want just a 20. Well, Jimmy, uh, coaches try for those 20-second timeouts, but that was a full timeout available right there. They didn't have a 20. Right. They called for it at first, but uh, had to wave it off to take a full. So two full timeouts left for each team. Here's the pressure. Not guarding anybody taking the ball out of bounds. Wilson comes back for it. And, and here's where they got to keep the press on. Maybe even double team the ball. One minute left for the game. They come up to double them up. There it is. Now, first time tonight we've seen Connecticut really kamikaze press. Hughes drives in, misses the layup, but got it back. And a foul called on Knight. Actually, they'll call that on Rudy Johnson with 48 seconds remaining. Wilson is built so low to the ground and so powerful. Hughes had an easy layup. Nobody on him and missed that shot, but battled back to get it. But Connecticut, for the first time tonight, going kamikaze on the press. Dante Jones at the line, shooting a one-on-one. They're going to call it a two-shot situation. They said in the act of shooting, Billy. I didn't see that. Well, he was smooth on it. Jim, we kept talking all year long about the Big East, maybe three teams in the final four. Right now, with the scores out here, hey, what, what were we thinking? How about the SEC <laughs> yeah, with three really? in the final four? Oh, good tap back by Dampier, but nobody there. Two possession game, UConn down six. Boy, look at Bullock, move those feet. Sheffer, having it off night, but hits the big one. Down to three, 38 seconds to go. Just the third field goal of the night for Sheffer. Got to pick up. Hughes a little shaky with the ball. Long pass. Ten seconds. Ten seconds ball. See, Jim, he never had the ball over the ten second line. Even though his foot was over, he, what you need to be over the 10-second line is foot and ball. Now watch this. He'll have his foot over, but never the ball. And everything must be over, ball and feet, to beat the 10. That's a, a, that's a pretty astute call. Yep, very good. Timeout call. We'll be right back. Connecticut has one timeout. One second to go on the clock. Here's the line. There's the ball. There's the feet. You'll see the pass. It does not get over in time. Excellent call by the official here. Really on top of the game, Jim. Jim, they got to go for three, don't you think? Well, they're down three, 22, 26 seconds to go. Penetration. They've got Ray Allen sitting over here waiting on it. Here he comes, getting the solid screens. They're only looking for three. Now they go in with Knight. Back out, Allen for the tie. Oh, there's a last touch by Oh, they're saying Knight fouled. 
Dampier, a push off. Why did you think they had to get the three so fast with 26 seconds? I thought that they get a little penetration and kick out to Ray Allen. They tried to set up Ray Allen in the perimeter with a lot of solid screens. I really think that that was the thing to do. And then go to rebound it quickly. So Dampier will be at the line. He's going to be in a one-on-one. -on -one. Hey, you've got a great three-point shooter. Actually, normally you have two, Jim. Shepard and I did hit that one three. Up to that point, he was two for 12. That's where, again, I'll go back to Ricky Moore. He's the kind of guy who could blaze in there and then kick back out to those two good jump shooters. Huge shot here. One and one for Dampier. Jim, you got a four-point lead, two-possession game. What you don't want if you're Mississippi State is no fouls. Got the soft roll on them both. Just stay away from them. Ooh, why would they bring it up and call it time? Well, all the time with 7.3 remaining. They have no timeouts left. Jim Calhoun wanted the timeout after the basket. Then he says, my fault. Seven seconds to go. They have no timeouts remaining. Down five. Sheffer open on the inbounds. No call. Out to Allen. And Mississippi State's going to knock out a run. Mississippi State in a 12-day stretch has beaten Kentucky and now Connecticut. First one to go down, right, Jim? Second. Second one? Purdue. Purdue, that's right. You're exactly right. Terrific job by that young man, Bullard. Ray Allen, one of the nation's best, just as we saw Terry Kittles, All-American, have to walk away last week. So Mississippi State is in the Elite Eight. And will play the winner of the Georgia Tech Cincinnati game, which follows. The genuine Chevrolet players of the game are Daryl Wilson from Mississippi State with 27 and Travis Knight in his final game in a Husky uniform with a double-double. A one has been eliminated. What a huge disappointment for the Huskies who end their season 32-3. and three. They run into a hot team, the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. Right now, let's send it back to New York and Pat O'Brien. Hi, Jim. We'll hear from you later. First trip ever to the Elite.